it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're doing great and I apologize for sounding like this but I'm sick with the flu and yeah that's the reason I wasn't able to post a video yesterday because that was the absolute worst. Even breathing was very painful so yeah I'm doing a little bit better today and I'm able to record a video and thank you guys so much for your very caring comments by the way I really appreciate them. So as we look at the satellite imagery here, we're seeing that there's quite a bit of activity going on in uh, just offshore of the United States with the frontal system moving through. Another low pressure system is out there not being a bother to anyone right now. And of course, going to the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean, it is on the quieter side as much as not happening. And there are a few thunderstorms popping up in parts of Northern South America. Some showers are moving by portions of the Caribbean and uh, not a whole lot of activity really, but as we're going to be heading through today to the very early morning hours of tomorrow, we can see here that uh, the map isn't very, very colorful for the Caribbean, but we do see some of these gray and green shadings as well, indicating that there could be some showers moving by. And with that frontal system moving through as well, there may be a bit more rain in parts of southern Mexico, Belize, Gu uh, Guatemala, and even for parts of western Cuba and up to Florida as well, there could be some additional shower. So elsewhere, there may be some brief downpours, but uh, some areas are not guaranteed to get any precipitation whatsoever. Down to northern South America, Colombia, parts of Venezuela remain active and uh, going to the Guyana as much as not expected. Moving on to the wind forecast. So here we are seeing it from Euro. And uh, we're seeing these darker purples and these blues popping up as well. So the winds are certainly kicking up in the Gulf with that frontal system moving through. Winds coming in from the north uh, for the Gulf Coast of Mexico. And also in the southeast and south central Caribbean, we can see that it uh, expects to be a bit windy today as well. But elsewhere, maybe more on the tranquil side up to the northern Bahamas may also be a bit windy there for you guys. And uh, going on to the wave height forecast, here we can see that as we're going to be heading into later today, uh, those waves are definitely going to be kicking up in the Gulf with those winds getting a bit stronger there. So uh, seas may be a bit rougher for parts of the Bay of Campeche, going up to around 6, 7 feet, maybe even up to 8 feet in some spots. But for much of the Caribbean, anywhere from below a foot up to 3 or 4 feet. But uh, just offshore Colombia, we can see that we have those darker blue shadings and that green popping up as well so likely to be a bit more active there and also offshore the united states we're seeing those yellows and those reds popping up so seas probably up to 15 feet or higher within those areas now of course this is a countdown video to the official start of hurricane season and as you would have seen in the thumbnail euro is forecasting a very active season so we're going to be taking a look at the anomaly for that for August, but I also want to show you guys uh, a comparison in terms of the sea surface temperatures. Now this was for uh, really March 11th last year and take a look at this. We see uh, mostly 26, 27 degrees across parts of the Caribbean and of course the cooler colors, the grains going to the blues indicate uh, lower temperatures. And now this is a comparison with March 9th uh, of this year, 2024, and we can see some of these more vibrant shadings in and around the vicinity of the Caribbean, 28 degrees. So the tropical Atlantic is favorable right now for development, but as we know, sea surface temperatures, that's only a part of the story. There are other variables that have to be conducive to actually allow for something to develop. And usually as we head into the latter part of spring and early summer, we tend to see just that. We tend to see uh, wind shear getting conducive to allow for development to happen, as well as these tropical waves, these low pressure systems moving off Africa and propagating to the west. And uh, this is a look at the temperature anomaly for the tropical Atlantic. So from Africa to the Caribbean, we're seeing these orange shade and some of these reddish shadings as well so it is most certainly above average and by the way february was the warmest on record so temperatures are well on their way globally not only in the atlantic basin but on a global scale for many areas and 
La Nina is expected to set in as we head into the heart of the hurricane season, which would allow for more development to take place. Now, this is a look at the Euro precipitation for, uh, anomaly forecast here, and uh, this is for August 2024. So, before the peak month of hurricane season, which is September, take a look at this. Now, as we head from that lighter to the darker green shaded and the blue, that is indicating above average precipitation. So, that means that things are likely to be wetter within these areas, offshore Africa, across the tropical Atlantic, and of course, the Caribbean. So, above average precipitation expected, which means that we could have a lot of these tropical waves developing as they make their way to the west. And uh, most of the Caribbean is highlighted in at least the, the very pale green shading, and that suggests a dominant high. And a dominant high pressure system would rotate clockwise. So, when it is very strong because of that rotation, we tend to see systems being pushed more into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. As I've been talking about, as you have maybe been seeing other forecasts saying, it's likely that we'll have a very active hurricane season, potentially a historic one. And by the way, Euro is also calling for 17 named storms, of which nine could become hurricanes, but that's not for the entirety of the season. That's April until around the end of September. So that does not include October and November. And with La Nina setting in and strengthening, that could mean that we could have an active end to the hurricane season as well. We could even see storms popping up in December. So that would not be surprising to see given the above average temperatures and of course that favorable phase of the Enso El Nino Southern Oscillation. So La Nina would certainly aid in a lot more development and so, uh, again, this is the list of names for the Atlantic hurricane season this year, all the way from Alberto through William. And there are 21 names on this list, and every list designated to the hurricane season. But should the season be so active that there are more than 21 storms, there is a supplemental list that will name those additional cyclones that develop. And so, guys, uh, that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update video so again uh, euro is certainly calling for an active hurricane season and euro is usually regarded as the best forecast model out there so uh very interesting stuff i mean all sources so far expecting that this hurricane season will be a very active one so it's just to see how things play out from this point onwards but that's it for right now and i really hope you found this video to be very informative but if you have any questions Feel free to leave them in the comments, I'll respond when I can, and remember to always be otherwise.